Welcome to another one of my construction math videos. My name is Spencer Henkel and I'd like to thank Portland Community College and the National Science Foundation. Specifically, I'd like to thank the LOCATE grant at PCC and the PI of that grant, Todd Sanders. One thing that I'd like to mention before we get started is that there are two trigonometry videos that preceded this video that if you don't know trigonometry, this probably isn't going to make a whole lot of sense until you watch the other two videos. So make sure you watch the uh, one on trigonometry and there's one that has three trigonometry problems that you can solve on your own. Uh, and then come on back and watch this. This one is called the Monet Bridge Problem. And this one is actually a real problem. Uh, a friend of mine called me one night and he said, um, my wife and I are putting a Monet garden in our backyard and if you don't know Claude Monet. He was a famous Impressionist artist who drew many, many uh, beautiful pieces of art uh, in his uh, backyard, basically, in his garden. And one of the features of the garden was a, a little creek and this beautiful little arch bridge that spanned the creek. Well, Dan wanted to put one of these in. He said, you know, we've, we're putting a creek in and, and I want to have an authentic Monet a bridge. So he said, I sent away for a uh, set of plans. But the problem is, the set of plans, uh, it doesn't give me the radius that I need to lay out. You know, I need to lay out th that arc on a beam and then cut it out. So here's what he had to do. He needed to uh, put, it, put his beam down on the floor, uh, anchor a nail in something that, that wouldn't move on the floor, tie uh, some heavy twine to it, stretch it out real good, and then uh, attach a pencil so he could swing that arc on the beam. His pencil would mark it out, and then he would move it up an appropriate amount uh, for the top of the beam and, and mark it out. But he didn't have the radius. This is what he had. The plans gave him this information. They said, draw, draw a uh, tangent line 74 inches and drop uh, a leg down 90 degrees that is 16 inches long and at the end of that 16 inch long piece and at the left end of your tangent line that's where your arc will span so the arc will span between those two points so he said why didn't they give me the radius I said well the reason they didn't give you the radius is because they wanted to give you uh, flexibility. If you didn't want your bridge to be 74 inches, say you wanted it to be 90 inches, this gave you a proportion to work with. So you could say 74 is to 16 as 90, let's say, is to X. Do some cross multiplying and you've got new dimensions for your bridge and then you would go and calculate your, your radius. So he said, can you help me? I said, well, I'll tell you what, give me, give me about 10 minutes and uh, I'll call you back. So this is what I did. I drew this out on a piece of paper. I just sketched it. It wasn't perfect like what you're seeing here. So I drew a 74 inch line. I dropped down the 16 inch uh, at 90 degrees. And then I came on back across um, to make it into a triangle. And that bottom piece uh, was actually a cord. So it, it spanned from um, one end of the arc to the other end of the arc as a cord. And then I said, okay, I know that they told me this was a tangent line for some reason. And the reason they told me that was because a tangent line is perpendicular to one radius. Ah, and that's what I need is a radius. So I drew a line down approximately 90 degrees off of that 74 inch line and then I thought well gosh if I extend the line from the other end down I'll have I'll have a nice uh, isosceles triangle but what I need is a right triangle so I thought all right I'll extend a line down from the center of that cord and extend it down at 90 degrees and have it touch the radius and then that point that will be where the center of the circle is now, we still don't know what the dimension is, but we know where it is, and you kind of get a sense of the proportions. All right, so here's what I did next. 
I broke out the uh, small triangle and I thought, well, I'm going to solve for that, that angle over on the left there. So I'm going to call that angle X. That's what I want to know. I've got the opposite side at 16 inches and I have the adjacent side at 74 inches. And so that is tangent. Opposite over adjacent equals the tangent of angle X. So then I filled in the boxes in my little um, triangle here. I put 16, the opposite side, in the top compartment, 74 in the bottom left, and a tan in the bottom right. So I covered up the one that I wanted to know, which was the angle, and that informed me that I had a division problem. I divided 74 into 16, and I got 0.2162. The tangent of angle X was 0.2162. To find the angle, I need to do second function on my calculator, tangent. So I put in 0.2162, second function, tangent, and I come up with 12.2 degrees. And I have 12.2 degrees there. All right, let's go back to the original drawing. So now I have 12.2 degrees. I know that the radius makes a 90 degree angle with that 74 inch tangent line. So I'm just going to subtract 12.2 12 from, uh, 12 from 90 and that gives me that angle, 77.8 degrees. So now I have something to, to work with. What I need to know now is what the length of the cord is, or what the length of the hypotenuse of the 74-16 triangle is. And we all know the Pythagorean theorem. I took 74 square plus 16 square, I took the square root of that, and I got the distance of 75.71. That's all the way across. What I need is half of that. So I divided by 2 and got 39.36. Now I've got a trig problem, don't I? I've got one. I've got everything I need. I have a reference angle of 77.8 degrees. I have the adjacent side, 39.36. And I'm going to solve for the hypotenuse, which just happens to be the radius that I need. All right, so let's do that math. That looks like cosine to me. We've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Let's fill in our little cabinets here. We're going to put 39.36, the adjacent side, in the top compartment. We're going to put X in the hypotenuse compartment because we don't know what it is. And then the cosine of 77.8 degrees in the uh, bottom right compartment. Cover up the one that I want to know, and I've got a simple division problem here. I'm going to divide the cosine of 77.8 into 39.36. And when I do that, I get 186.25. The hypotenuse is 186.25, and that's my radius. So I have my answer. If I converted it into feet and inches, it's 15 feet, 6 and a quarter inches. So there it is, a nice, clean little problem. So we started out really with just four pieces of information. We had a tangent line that was 74 inches and then another line that dropped down 90 degrees was 16 inches. Four pieces of information and we came up with this radius. So now I called my friend back. I was so excited. I had figured this out and he was amazed. He couldn't believe it. He really couldn't believe it when he actually laid it out and it worked. <laughs> that was what was so amazing to him, he called me back and said, God, I can't believe it. How did you do that? Well, you know, just a little bit of trig. It was pretty easy, really. So what he did was he put the nail in something solid, tied the heavy twine to it, extended the heavy twine out, stretched it real good so that uh, it was, you know, pre-stretched before he uh, marked the arc, tied in the pencil so that he got it exactly at 100 and, what was it, 186 and a quarter, and mark the arc on the beam. And then he cut the pencil loose, extended it out a little farther for the top part of the beam, and swung that arc. So the thing I like about this problem is, is that, you know, 
when you first look at it, you, it doesn't look like there's much information there. And you start building. You start building information and building and building until you get your answer. Some math problems are the other way around. You have a lot of information that you have to cull through and go through it and figure out what you need and what you don't need. Um, but the thing is, is just stick with it. If you know your math, if you know how to do trigonometry, if you can add, subtract, divide, and multiply, you can do any of these problems. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you on the next one.